Hello everyone, Rick here. Welcome back to my channel and happy Easter to those of you who celebrate. It's been a while since I've uploaded a video so I'm just going to give you a tour and update on everything that has happened to the garden since. Um, it's early spring now and things are really starting to wake up. Um, I figure I'd start in a different place this time. I'm towards the back, well what we consider the back of the property, so the western side of the property. And on this side we just have a few outbuildings and just trees planted, not much. So here in bloom now is a red crab apple that I planted last year in the fall. It was a Clarence tree and it's already blooming beautifully. It has nice um, bronze foliage and the flowers are just gorgeous. Hopefully when it gets a lot bigger, we can see it from the house. If you've been following me for a while, you should know that or remember that I had planted lots of small pine seedlings. Most of them were less than a foot tall and here they are now about two or three years later I can't remember exactly I have to go back and look at the video but look at this one it's taller than I it's about at least seven or eight feet tall I'm heading back towards the house now so I'm heading east and from the the pine walk I'm heading through this hoop this um, cow panel arch sorry see it's a cow panel that I just shaped into an arch on the right side here is a honeysuckle which is now coming into bloom it just has one or two flowers on it now I don't want to focus but and a climbing rose on the other side and here is my orchard so this year the peach trees so in front of me now is one peach tree it's a bell of Georgia peach this one both of the peach trees so I have them planted opposite each other they flowered beautifully. So hopefully this year I'm going to get some peaches. Last year only one peach formed and something came by and ate it. So this year hopefully if the squirrels don't get the peaches first I can get a couple peaches. I don't know if I'll have to get like a net to protect them but hopefully I'll get some peaches. One of the plum trees can see it there and now have it in the center frame did flower but um, not as strongly as say the peaches so maybe next year everything should hopefully flower beautifully so from the orchard here is the hot border and no flowering action but you can see all of the Perennials are coming up. That's the fig tree there in the middle. I cut it back. I did some rearranging of things. Um, there's some grass in the back of this bed that I have to get rid of. And there's a lot of bindweed in here. I think a lot of gardeners have that problem of just one bed with persistent bindweed, but it's just kind of something you have to live with. It's incredibly difficult to get rid of I've tried everything I've tried digging it up smothering it spraying doesn't work it just comes back with a vengeance so it's just something that you know I just have to work on every so often and pull it out so it doesn't spread to other parts of the bed on the way to the jungle garden just stopping a while to admire this red Japanese maple the leaves are so vibrant and brilliant as they first come out and it's full of flower 
So I'm entering the jungle garden which is on the south side of the house and you can see the pathway that I worked on last year and right now blooming is lots of tulips. So these are all clearance tulips and remarkably the squirrels, rabbits and deer did not well maybe they chewed on one or two but most of the tulips here they left alone so I don't know what's special about these tulips um, if I see some more clearance I'm going to plant them I'm not a huge fan of tulips but they do not look nice when they're planted on in mass so maybe at the end of this year I shall plant some more but they're looking quite spectacular right now here underneath the dogwood tree which is coming into flower I added these I don't know let me come around I added these branches that I pruned off and I plant of um sorry of our juniper heads so I pruned it and I placed these branches here like a vine and then I added these two cute <laughs> parrots to them they're really small so they're not that realistic but you can see them the red color from all around like from inside the office and the backyard and they just make you smile so when hair fills out and gets really jungly I don't know I hopefully it puts a smile on anybody's face who comes by I also put out my little iguana his name is Charlie Oh, the sun is now coming up over the horizon so forgive all the shadows there's Charlie and that's the jungle garden so let's head back around the house into the pool garden so we're coming through the gate from the jungle garden into the pool garden and there's lots of vinca in bloom vinca minor which was just a carpet of purple for the past few weeks and the bees have just been loving it here's the purple tree the american purple that is and there's so many flowers on it very interesting shaped flower and they're pollinated by flies so there should be a lot of flies on these soon here's a blueberry bush has lots of flowers on it as well so hopefully the blueberry should start forming soon <coughs> down here look at this this euphorbia isn't it neat? Look at the colors. Beautiful. On the other side of the pool garden, this area was just filled with color from late winter through now because there were a lot of bulbs in here. We had a lot of crocus earlier in the year and they have finished. And then we had all those, we had a bunch of daffodils in here and they are now finishing so as the bulbs recede and the perennials take over this area should be changing in the next couple of weeks so we're heading through the gate from the pool garden which is which is on the southwest corner of the house to the cotton candy border which is on the west and the northwest side of the house so you can see here everything waking up in a couple of weeks we should have some roses and peonies blooming i don't have too many bulbs in here because i forget where i plant the bulbs and then when i plant some perennials i end up digging them up but there's some tulips that have remained here in this corner is my weeping cherry tree 
which was one of the first trees I planted and it it was kind of disappointing in the beginning because it hardly ever flowered it like put out blooms sporadically on the tips very tips of the branches and every year I'm like oh I'm gonna cut it out but I, I just couldn't bring myself to do it it has such a nice shape it has good fall color and every year I say you know maybe next year maybe next year and well this year it bloomed much much uh, more prolific than it has ever done so I just figured it just needed time to get settled into its spot so you can see some residual blooms on it down there and I don't know if it looks like cherries are forming I'm not sure but there are a lot of bees on it so you can see in there where the petals have fallen off I don't know if fruit is going to form on there maybe so back towards the house the rest of the cotton candy border see more things waking up over here so it's going to be a lot of action over the next few weeks through the end of May there's going to be something different blooming every week I can't promise that I will capture everything you see it's taken me a while to even start recording this video the weekends are just so busy now and the weather has not been great so when there's good weather is when I'm actively in the garden doing maintenance and things like that so I don't really have time to record a video and then it takes a while to edit a video it's just not instantly as I record I upload so but I do take lots of photos and put them on my Instagram so you can follow me there there's this little plant that I have behind um, sorry at the next next to the back step I planted some pansies in there late this year and they're already fading because of the heat that we get on and off but from this week it looks like it's going to be hot straight through over here some irises should be blooming bearded iris should be blooming soon and the foxgloves look really full and healthy there's a foxglove in the back there so let's go around to the kitchen garden but before we head over there just want to share this is the cherry one of the fruiting cherries has lots of flowers on it last year we got again we got a couple cherries forming and then one day there were no cherries so I'm really going to probably have to invest in some nets if I ever want to get fruit so here's our kitchen garden and I just wanted to show you the beautiful bulbs that are planted on the outside. We had lots of daffodils and hyacinths planted in here and you can see the daffodils are beginning to go over and the hyacinths are finished but there was so much, um, so much fragrance in the air from all the hyacinths in here and it just looked like Easter because the colors were pink and purple and white and the yellow from the daffodils it really looks like an Easter basket full that you might see <laughs> in a kid's store or something but it was it was really something to see I think I have some video of it that I can put up here so we're heading into the north garden now and this is where most of the action has been starting way back in February um, with late winter things blooming and then we had a real warm-up in February got hot into the high 70s and everything budded out and then it cooled back down and it was a little um, I was a little anxious that we would have gotten a freeze and all of the buds would have fallen off but luckily temperatures stayed above freezing so it prolonged flowering so the magnolia tree which I'm standing under was in bloom for almost all of March 
like the flowers were opening very slowly and we got a magnificent magnificent show um, in fact all of the magnolias that we have put on a really good show I have one in the back close to the vegetable garden and one in the front and it looked really fantastic to the right is the first rhododendron that blooms this time of year I believe it's rhododendron cotton candy or candy puff or something like that it was a clearance plant and I planted it many years ago and it's it actually a branch fell on it and broke it so you could see where it broke and I just cut it back and now it's this little shrub here um, this seems to grow very very slowly I mean I've had this since we've moved here and it hasn't put on much height but it blooms every year prolifically over there you can see the hostas coming up I love them at this stage they look so fresh almost like lettuce I think you can actually or some people eat hosta shoots I'm not going to be adventurous and try to the left you see a Paris and Paris also have been blooming for a really long time from like February till now they're still in bloom a really tough all season interest plant here is my paper bush and this bloomed back in February so you can see where the flowers were they've already come and gone but it had so much fragrance in this garden from the paper bush here and the Daphne bush I'll show you the Daphne bush later but really beautiful early blooming shrub another early bloomer was the witch hazel you can see where the flowers were I believe this is witch hazel Diane is the name of this cultivar it's another slow growing plant well I guess it's relatively slow growing because um, it's about three years old and about f five feet tall and when I, I buy trees and shrubs really small and it was probably about 18 inches if so much so not terribly slowly here's another Pieris in bloom and right now the eastern red bud is in bloom you can see uh, the fluffy pink flowers there it's really early in the morning so not many pollinators are out but this thing is normally full of bees look at it it's gorgeous the flowers appear right on the branches so you can see flowers all the way down and this was another <laughs> clearance plant clearance tree I remember buying it and the cashier was like you know it's dead right and I was like no it's alive and it stayed outside all winter in its pot and it died right back the the tree died right back so I had to cut back the trunk and it shot back up from the roots so now it's a multi trunk tree which is much more interesting than a standard single trunk tree to me Oh, I almost missed these. Look, here are the bleeding hearts. They're just so cute. These are another plant that I've had a really long time since where we lived before um, 2013, 2014. And I brought them here. And they've kind of just stayed right in this area. They haven't self seeded too much, but. You can see one over here that's self-seeded. They only pop up now 
the leaves stay around for a while and then they go back dormant in the summertime. So here's the winter Daphne, variegated Daphne. And there are some of the flowers still holding on, but this was in bloom also in February. And the fragrance was just incredible. You could smell it from a ways away. And I remember opening the windows and just the, letting the fragrance fill the house. It was amazing. I'm going to try to take some cuttings from it. This year, I really want to, you know, every year I say I want to take more cuttings. Um, it's a really long process and I could see why plants, like tr shrubs and trees especially, are so expensive, relatively expensive, because it's a slow process. Um, but I want to try. And next to that, we have the coral back Japanese maple, which has leafed out. So I'm at the front of the house now, close to the highway, which is on the east side of the property. And you can hear a lot of cars. I guess people are going to church um, for Easter Sunday service. So it's a bit busy outside right now, even though it's very early in the morning. And here's another one of my crab apples. I don't remember the cultivar on this one, uh, but it has gold. I think it's harvest gold. It has like golden small crab apples in the fall and soft pink, pinkish white flowers. And so I look forward to seeing all the little golden crab apples on it. Here in the front, I just have lots of small trees and shrubs um, lined up, essentially like in an alleyway. And I take this path when I go to collect the mail. And there are a few daffodils and there are a lot of crocuses out here earlier. Here is the fish pond. The water is relatively clear. I can see the fish actually when it comes to summertime it's going to become a lot more murky so I won't be able to see them too much um, but they're up and about from their winter slumber so I've been feeding them once a week once the temperature gets above like 50 degrees and also on the right there's a water lily now waking up and here's the bog filter. I cleared it out and I cleared out a lot of old creeping jenny and the old um, dead iris and things like that, the old foliage and it has taken off. You can't even see my little statue there. I'm gonna have to raise it up. But that's it for this garden tour and update. What's happening in your garden? So is there a lot of things waking up? Do you have a lot of blooms? Um, if you're in North America, how did the weather affect your garden this year? So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video and I'll see you around next time. Until then, goodbye.